as children of God on the pilgrimage of faith, we come here so often to this basilica to sit in the home of our mother of perpetual help. The presence of her icon makes this a family home to us, her children. Together with generations before us, we recognize in this maternal house our home, the house where we find refreshment, comfort, peace, protection, and shelter. People of Mission Hill and beyond have understood from the beginning that it is in the difficulties and trials we must resort to our mother of perpetual help as indicated by one of the most ancient Marian antiphons. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not despise the supplications of us who are undergoing trials, but deliver us from all danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. So we are all looking for refuge. We are all seeking shelter. The early church fathers have taught that in turbulent moments, we must gather under the mantle of our mother of God. In ancient times, the needy and the persecuted would seek refuge from noble high ranking women who as a sign of reception and protection would graciously stretch out their cloaks. In a similar way, we see this with Mary, our mother the queen of the universe. Her dark blue mantle is always open to welcome us and gather us. The Eastern Orthodox Church reminds us of this, where many celebrate the protection of the mother of God, who is depicted in a beautiful icon where she with her mantle shelters her children and covers the whole world. Even the ancient monks recommended in trials, take refuge under the mantle of the Holy Mother of God and quietly invoke her as Holy Mother of God over and over again. Repeating this very simple prayer, Holy Mother of God, Holy Mother of God, Holy Mother of God. They tell us this is a sure guarantee of protection and help. And I think this wisdom, which comes from afar, it helps us. The Mother of God guards faith. She protects relationships. She saves us in the storms and preserves us from evil. When Mary is in our home, the devil cannot enter. Where there is the mother of God, disturbance does not prevail, fear does not win. And who of us does not need this? Who of us is not sometimes upset or restless? How often is the heart on a stormy sea where the waves of problems seem to overlap and the winds of worry do not cease to blow? Mary is the sure ark in the midst of the flood. Now ideas or technology will not give us comfort and hope, but what does, I think, is the face of our mother of perpetual help, are her hands that caress life and her mantle that is meant to shelter us. We learn to find refuge going always to Mary, our mother. I love in the Memorare, we say and sing, do not ignore our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer us. You see, when we plead to her, Mary in turn pleads for us promptly. And I think promptly is the adjective that Luke uses in the gospel to say how Mary went to her cousin Elizabeth, so with us, she intercedes promptly. She does not delay, as we hear in the Gospel of John, when she immediately brings to Jesus her concern 
for the people at the wedding and tells him they have no wine. And she says nothing more. I like to believe this is how it happens each time we invoke her, when we lack hope, when joy seems scarce, when our strength is exhausted, when the star of life is darkened and hidden from view, Mary intervenes. And if we invoke her, she intervenes more. She is attentive to our labors. She's so sensitive to the turbulence, the turbulence of life that are so close to our hearts. And she never, never, never despises our prayers. She does not let even one fall. She is our mother. She's never ashamed of us. She only wants to be able to help her children. Once in the hospital at Brigham and Women's, a mother was watching over her son who was in great pain after a serious accident. And the mother had been at her son's bedside for three days, never leaving him. And when I came in to visit him, the mother looked at me and said, the Lord has not given something to us mothers. And I asked, well, what is that? And she answered, he has not allowed mothers to take the pain of their children. Well, that may be true with natural mothers, but that is not so with Mary, our mother. Her motherly heart is not ashamed of the wounds or of the weaknesses of her children. She wants us. She wants us with Jesus. And the mother of God, our mother, knows how to take our pain with her, how to console, how to watch, how to heal. I think it's a great danger for the faith to live without a mother, without protection, letting ourselves being carried away like leaves from the wind. Jesus knows this and tells us to welcome his mother. This is not spiritual etiquette. It is a need for life. Loving her is not poetry. It is knowing how to live because without Mary, our mother, we cannot be her children. And we, first of all, first of all, are children, beloved children, who have God for the Father and Mary for our mother. So let us look at her in this beautiful icon and with tenderness, let's say hello to her as the Christians of Ephesus said so long ago. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Holy Mary, Mother of God.